Ebony, and her two babies, Lacquer and Luster. And they're the smallest. They were the last born just a few days ago. Say, like, I don't know now because time has no meaning because I've been working the night shift or taking the night shift on lambing watch. Um, so maybe two days old. They might be 48 hours old now. I might be missing a day in there. But anyways, they're doing really well. And they were the last born of this batch. There may be a few more yos, but they will be quite some time. Um, like maybe a few weeks, even. Ebony's thinking about going out. And behind me is Judy and her lamb. That's Lilac. And Judy lambed, Judy and Ebony are two of my best buddy a sheep. And they lamb last. And I had told Judy that, um, I'll link that video, her birthing story, that I was leaving in a few days because I thought I was going to leave a little bit sooner. But anyways, uh, and she should hurry up and have her lamb before I left. So, um, yes, then that was in the night. And so in sort of the later morning, she had her lamb. And then the next night, Ebony had her lamb. So, yes, so everyone in the main flock has lambed. Here she comes. And, uh, <coughs> she likes to do that and have a look. Um, <coughs> hey, babies. So these are, <laughs> these are Zwart Blush. <coughs> Zwart Blush sheep. They're originally a Dutch breed. Hello, sweetie. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Oh, Gimbal, don't do that. Yeah. That is lacquer. Because Luster has a little bit of white on her chest. These are both you lambs, yo lambs, girls. Yeah. This is the bag. I'm going to show the people all kinds of things are in it. Oh, yeah, we're having a pet. Hi, Ebony. Ebony's having, checking things out. I figured they all would. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting a snuggle. I'm getting a lamb snuggle. Yeah. Hey, sweetie. This is what you all want to see, I think. You don't care so much about me talking. About my knitting. Well, you will, but, I mean, I know you do, because that's why you watch a knitting podcast, but... <coughs> mm-hmm. We have to spend some time with tiny little lambs, only a couple days old. How sweet is that? Yeah. <coughs> hey, baby. Hey, baby. <coughs> Time for a drink. Time for a drink. Oh, little lamb, lamb leaps. That's the cutest thing. Ebony's deciding does she want to go out or is it still kind of drizzling? Okay, there's Judy. There's my buddy Judy. And I have a nice video as well as her birthing story of the birthing story of another sheep where Judy is very much interested every year. She's such a character. Um, last year I came for the lambing and the only, and before that, not during COVID, but cause I couldn't obviously. Uh, but Judy is very much a sheep midwife. She's very interested in the whole thing, aren't you? And she likes to be videoed. So that's those longer videos. Some of them are on my other channel, which is just called Wild Cottage Ireland. And I'll, I'll link those below. Um, yeah, because they're just about sheep, really. Yeah. And I can also link on this channel. I have some of the sheep lambing stories from last year before I had the Wild Cottage Ireland. Ireland channel uh, <laughs> such a funny voice and they're in a playlist that is called was Svartblas Ireland so um, 
if you want to check that out. Oop. Hey, Lilac, did I give you a fright? Do <laughs> you want to go out? Well, you can go around me. You can go around me. Hey, Judy. Or do you not really want to go out? She loves a scratch, and so does Ebony. And Little Bit as well, but Little Bit had her baby quite a bit earlier, so she's up in the big field with all the other yos. And these two will probably join them maybe even later today or tomorrow. I'm not certain, but yeah. Um, okay, so I don't know what I've said or not said. I might have to insert something here. But it's so um, my name is Susan. I live in County Clare in Ireland, but I'm here in County Kilkenny with my friend Suzanne at my friend Susanna's farm, Black Sheep Farm. Also, uh, <laughs> Start Gloss Ireland is uh, her handle, like on Twitter, and she's on Facebook and uh, Instagram, and she does a lot of videos here on YouTube of farm life and all. So yeah, so you may also know her as Bart Bloss Ireland. Um, yeah, helping with the lambing. So like I don't, if a lamb is in trouble or the mommy's in trouble, I don't, I don't pull out a lamb or anything. She does that. She can help with give the, the animal give birth if it's having trouble. But I just watch for the signs and if there is trouble and then I call her. And she does all that sort of thing. And I take the night shift so she can sleep because this is a, basically it's a one woman farm. It's a small farm, but you know, there are, I don't know how many sheep are at the minute. I always lose track, but I'd say there's, well, there's probably around 40. And then there are three horses and then there's chickens and there's four dogs. And also we had, there was puppies. So puppies, Inca gave birth to puppies while we were lambing as well, and um, planned puppies. And um, there are like four or five cats, and there are doves, so <laughs> it's a lot to be doing. Anyway, so yeah, so I take the night shift so she can try to get a little bit of sleep anyway. But that's all done now. And I'm starting to get back to a normal sleep shift and catch up on my sleep. And Tom, my partner Tom, is coming either later today or tomorrow to uh, probably stay two nights and then we'll go back home to County Clare because gardening season is in full swing and we grow our own vegetables and everything. So anyway, so we, oh yeah, so I'm here with my adopted uh, dog. He's a retired sheepdog Shep. And if you were watching uh, some of my earlier bits that I put up, just a thing or two on Instagram. He got very sick while he was here. It was a combination of he has a lot, he has like hips dysplasia and different problems. Um, that was bothering, but then he also got some sort of infection, some sort of bug. So, yeah. But he's much, much better now, which is great. So, the sheep have left me. They've all gone out. Because it stopped raining. Hey, yeah. Uh so, of course, I, there's a lot of interruptions because it's a farm and <laughs> things are happening. Um, so, uh, but I was starting to show you at some point because someone had asked about Susanna's blanket. So, with the, the Zvarplas sheep, she has the wool spun at a local traditional woolen mill. There has been a woolen mill uh, there, not in continuous use, but since the monks were there in Greg Namana, it's this lovely little village here in County Kilkenny, Cushendale Wool Mills the Wool. The monks first started the, the mill in the 1200s. So, yeah, over 800 years. Um, and then, of course, when the monasteries were dissolved and all that, that all stopped. But then the Cushion family took it over or started it back up several generations ago now as well. So it's a family-run mill. It's a small mill. They have lovely um they have a lovely old spinning mule from the 1800s so it's small scale but they have been spinning irish wool for ages and ages and they started working with the galway breed um, even before the galway co-op formed anyway but it's a very special mill and they spin susanna's vartblas and here is an example of 
I have, I have an example of the yarn because I've knit with it. I'll show you. And they make her blankets. Now, this is a cat blanket from Bodacious the Cat Shepherd, who has sadly passed on. He was the shepherd cat. He was so good with all the sheep. And he wrote a book. He wrote a book with Susanna called Bodacious the Shepherd Cat. And it's still available. It's a really, it's a really good book where she talks a lot about, or he, Bodacious talks about farm life and regenerative farming and all the little stories around the farm and how Oven Mitt the cat got his name and all these sort of things. So I, I'm sure you can still get it as an ebook on Amazon and maybe in your local bookshop as well. Um, yeah, it came out 2018. She had to finish it during lambing time for the the publishers moved up the date. So that was the first time I came and helped her with lambing on the night shift because that was the wrong time to try to finish the book during lambing. Oh my goodness. So anyway, yeah. So this is his cat blanket. And the design on this is obviously the chocolate brown spark glass wool and then the white, which is representing the, the face blaze because they have white down the face and then they have white stockings. So this is the cat blanket size. So yeah, and it has on here, there we go. So the, her logo and then the Cushendale Nat Natural Textiles of Ireland. So yeah, so, and there's also a travel blanket size and a queen size blanket size for a bed. And Susanna has those for sale on her website, which is Zvart, com. I'm not sponsored. She doesn't pay me to do this. I just, I have her products. She's my friend. You know, um, I think they're fantastic. You know, she's managed to make a nice business out of black, brown, dark wool, which really is hard to do because most wool people want to buy wool that has been dyed and a, a very dark wool like this you can't dye so she's made a very special product and she farms regeneratively which is farming with nature in a very special way um reclaiming the soil life and of course all the wildlife and yeah so totally support someone like that whether it's my they're my friend or not so yeah anyhow so that's that. Yeah. Anyway, so first, let's go into what I'm wearing just real quickly. Now, this is a very special shawl that I cast on during Women's Christmas, which is the 5th of, December, 5th of January here in Ireland. It's a, it's a traditional festival, and it uh, is a time when traditionally, like, the women didn't have to do anything, and the men you know, served up the the leftover Christmas, probably leftover, they probably didn't cook anything for the women. But who knows, maybe they did. And uh, yeah, so it was a day for the women to just put their feet up and it's the last day of Christmas. It's called Little Christmas or Women's Christmas. And nowadays in more modern times, it's a day where we tend to get together with our women friends and just have some time together and catch up. And I cast this on on that day because this is, all yarns that are have to do have a connection with fiber friends that I have had. So this bluey purpley one is from Sweden. So it's from Amelia of Amelian Style and we did a swap and she sent me this yarn and she spun this herself and I think she's dyed it herself as well. So I and maybe I'll take this off so you can kind of see. So this is just a triangular shaped shawl. It's one of my favorite mindless shawls. You just, I cast on like three stitches and then I increase every other row. So I knit front and back every other row and I often tend to slip the first stitch pearlwise to just give it a, a neater edge, a um, bit neater edge, but sometimes I don't, it doesn't matter. So this here, so, if I don't mention otherwise, all this is Irish wool yarn, and it is a mix of Belclair breed, which is a modern Irish breed, and the Galway, which is a traditional Irish breed. This was dyed by my friend Sandra of Meet the Wool and Irish Fiber Crafters with lupins from my garden, and it was a beautiful blue, the same color as the blue that's in here, 
the actual bluey blue. After I knit this, I put it in the water to wash it and immediately it went green. So that would be to do with the pH of my water. So that was really interesting. So we're going to, but obviously Sandra, when she dyed it and she washed it and all, it didn't do it in her water. This is just the difference in water. Um, so we're going to do some experiments this year. So this was a lovely blue, but now it's a, it's a lovely green, like it's amazing. And then we have Amelia's yarn that I was telling you about and then we have some more Irish yarn and this is dyed by Sandra with a second bath of lac which is an insect then we have it transitioning into this yellow which is a Irish spun yarn by Donegal Woolen Mills it's a com oops a combo oh why 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 okay I'm back <laughs> I'm in a different place just because farm things started happening and yeah. So I'm out front in front of the cottage at Susanna's. Look, you can see the wisteria is blooming now and it has such a lovely smell. I was showing you what I was wearing, but let me show you. So it's a triangle shaped shawl. And so you, this one's quite big, but you could, you know, you can tie it around and, you know, wear it all sorts of ways like this. It's really snugly if you're cold. And then my favorite way that I just love wearing shawls the old fashioned way. It's big enough you could tie it around like this, but I just love them like this or you can you know do this and put your shawl pins in it's also a no waste sort of shawl because you just knit until you're like once you get it a decent size the size you'd like you just knit it until you're out of yarn or till you have the size you like so i just used up all these little smaller skeins of yarn that i had and i just i have a lot of these type of shawls and i just absolutely love them so I was starting to tell you about the shawl. So this was the green with the lupins from my garden. And this was the pinky and blue and purple from Amelia of Amelian Style. This is um, some pink dyed with lac of Sandra of Meet the Wool and Irish Fiber Crafters. Then this is uh, dyed by me from Dandelions in my garden. It's a little bit brighter than what it's looking here on the screen for me anyway. And then here we have, this is a special yarn I had a little bit left over. It's from Save the Sheep. So this was um, their first breed that they worked with, the, Ro the Rosset, which is a rare breed up in the Italian Alps. And this one was dyed with um, avocado and pomegranate no no sorry it was pomegranate I think yeah pomegranate and um, olive leaves I do believe by uh, Nicole of uh, Time Weaver she's part of Save the Sheep along with Antonio of Beagle Knits and then this is another one this is um, a lot of Sandra my friend Sandra of Meet the Wool and Irish Fiber Crafter her own sheep she has Wensleydales and BFL crosses just a like you know five or six, a small flock, and she's hand spun this, and she's dyed it with different things, and it ha it's an art yarn, there's a lot of different little pink nubs in it, and I just put them all together here in this lovely, lovely, cozy shawl full of very special wool and special memories of fiber friends. So that's what I'm wearing. Now, I shall show you my finished objects that I have finished uh, this month in April. So today is like the 26th or 27th of April. And let me show you what I finished. Now, my big finished object is I finished the test knit for Anna Nina of Anna Nuti Knits here on YouTube. And that's also her handle on Instagram, I believe. And she is in Finland and she has designed a lot of things. I've bought her patterns before and she was called for a test knit of uh, a new summer tea. And I answered that. I answered that call and I was accepted. So I was really glad. I'd never test knit for her before. And it is called the Tankar Tea, 
which is the name of an island off of Finland, I believe, that people go to in the summer. So it, it fit really well. And I'm going to insert clip here of me wearing it because I didn't want to wear it when I was going to film in the barn because I just didn't want it to get any sheep muck on it. So here is my test knit of the Tank RT by Anna Nuti Knits. I have done the top part with the, the garter in white and the bottom red, as you can see. I knit it to be about 11 inches from the underarm in total. That's the length that, that I like. Um, that's a DK weight yarn. That fold there is just because I couldn't block it properly here at Black Sheep Farm. I just had to lay it and fold it over the wood stove. So, but I really like it. Um, there's my hip bone. I'm trying to show you where it's hitting me. So that's the hip bone. There's my belly button, just sort of for reference. Um, I did the inch and a half of ribbing and that's hitting right around my hip bone. That's where I like a lot of uh, my tops to hit. I really enjoyed the pattern. So, I'll just show you a quick look at it up close. So, oh, there's an end. So here it is. Knit it out of um, a drops yarn, which I've never used drops yarns before except some of the mohair and silk a little bit. And so for this test knit, I ordered a couple things. So the original uh, pattern uh, is knit in drops bell, and I got some of that, which I did like, and that's like a cotton lino, linen vis viscose mix, I believe. But I just couldn't get the gauge with it for some reason. And so I just didn't, with lambing and being up, you know, in the night, I just didn't have the brain power to struggle with that. And so I, I had also ordered, again, because I wasn't certain about how the drops bell would work, I ordered some cotton merino because I had swatched with different yarns even before this, and the cotton merino seemed like that was a nice choice, but I didn't have enough of it. So I ordered, it was a different cotton merino. It was from Babel's Yarns. But I only had one skein because that was just a hand dyed. So I ordered these and they were, a f you know, I think maybe four euros or something. And I ordered five balls of red and three balls of white. And what I decided to do was that, so the, the tank, um, it's not a tank, it's the tank, the tea, you have your ribbing and then there's a lot of the garter stitch and I decided that what I would do and there are short rows in the front and back I would just do to the garter stitch in the white now with lambing brain so you knit you knit flat at first you knit the back and then you knit the front and then you join them together under the underarms you join in the round and you seam in the top so but with lambing brain when I was knitting the first part of when I was knitting the back I forgot to swap and you can see I dropped a stitch I have to fix that or I did something there um I forgot <laughs> to switch to the red and I didn't remember till later and so I just switched then so I've used a bit more of the white than I would have otherwise in the front I remembered so for the and I knit a size four so for the top all in the white I used two full balls and maybe half of another one. I don't have a scale, so I can't, um, but I will put it on Ravelry when I um, get home and I can weigh and let you know exactly. It's a very, I mean, I was able to knit it except for that one, you know, brain fart there, even with lambing brain of me being up throughout the night checking on lambs and having very weird sleep pattern. So, yes. So I would say it was a very enjoyable knit. Um, you'll see it on me here. I definitely will knit this again. And I really kind of like the idea that I can use like a special skein. So this is DK weight, I didn't say that. Um, this is DK weight, so the, the drop spell is um, in the 50 grams. Oh, here comes, <laughs> here comes some quad noise. It's probably gonna, okay. I
<laughs> yeah, we are. I put my other finished object on. One of my other finished objects on. I had to move inside because they're working on the stables. Just a window is being sort of repaired, so there was a hammering. I have the half door open, you know, the cottage half door here. I think I have the half door open, so I think I might shut it. There was angle grinding on the stone. Yeah, hold on a sec. While I'm up, just show you, obviously did not weave in ends, but this is my other finished object that uh, actually can be entered into two different cows. It was the 100 gram skein that I picked out as part of Kate of Hawthorne Cottage Craft, her lucky dip cow. So it was April skein that I picked out of a bag with just random 100 gram skeins in. And it is deep stash. So I don't know exactly where I got this. And it's an acrylic, 100% acrylic, which I don't generally knit with simply because of environmental reasons um, but it's it is lovely and soft and I can see why I bought it because the colors are beautiful but this is the label I oh wait oh it's from Stylecraft so yes so this came from so this came from Knitwit and Crafty Stitchers I believe because they carry Stylecraft so yes so it's um a sport weight it's about 294 meters in this 100 grams here and i can also knit this knit this in <laughs> i'm sure if you watch a lot of knitting podcasts you see maybe you i don't know if it's just podcasters or is it people that are avid knitters and don't even podcast that we substitute the word knit for all kinds of things I mean, not just like if I'm trying to say I'm spinning or crocheting, you know, and when we say knit, but like, I don't know what I would get, but like, yeah, knit just gets put in for all sorts of other words. <laughs> but I, I knit this, this can go into the Irish cow, which is being run by Sophie of Shunnock Yarns. She's a natural dyer in County Clare and also Diane of Dublin Knitworks. And so they're running that. That's on Instagram. And it started, cast on was, um, <coughs> pardon me, Patty's Day, March 17th. And it runs to, I think, the 3rd of June, which is the June bank holiday, I'd say. Um, and you can enter in with any sort of, you know, hand-dyed, uh, small dyer I Irish yarn or an Irish design pattern. So, yeah. So any anyone that's based here on the island of Ireland that is... Um, making yarn, hand dyed yarn, or maybe even small batch yarns. Like I would think maybe Svartlas Ireland, which is, it's an Irish yarn, that's not the, Irish yarn spun in Ireland from Irish sheep at a small mill at Cushendale, that probably would go as well. Or Irish based designer. So this pattern, I've modified it now, but this is a really great pattern for like a beginner. It's called Boom, B-O-O-M, exclamation point and it is by Emer Early and um, this it was a free pattern on Ravelry and I have just uh, slipped the first stitch purl wise to give it a bit of an edge at each row and then every however many rows I just felt like it pretty much I did uh, yarn over knit two together to make these eyelets um, because too I wanted to make the shawl maybe a bit bigger um, I just had the sport weight and yeah, it's, it's more of a summery kind of shawl for me. Um, and it just kind of stretched out the yarn a bit. So it's a boomerang shaped shawl. So it's quite long and it's just lovely, light and airy. And it's big enough that it'll just on a summer's evening, if it's a bit breezy or chilly, I can just put it just around the shoulders, like, you know, if you have on a tank and you just want a little warmth like that, and you can obviously do it all sorts of little ways. You can style it warm if you want, or you can have it long. You can kind of see the wingspan of it. So this is the wingspan that I got with a sport weight 
with the yarn over so I got it to be quite long. So you can wear it a lot of different ways when you get, you know, have your shawl pins. You can have it a lot of different ways. And obviously it's not super nice with just this kind of gray mock neck, but like a, yeah, just a little summery dress. And yeah, but I really, really like it. I love the colors and it was a really nice pattern for a beginner because it's very simple to do and you can do it with one skein of yarn if you want to make a little shawl. Yeah, and you can add in the eyelets and all as well if you want. But yeah, so if you're a, a new knitter, um, that's a free pattern you can go. So as long as you know how to do the knit stitch, there's no purling. And you do, just do the knit just stitch and you do your uh, knit front and back which is easy to do and if you don't know how to do it you just can uh, look here on YouTube and there'll be a tutorial so yeah uh, so I finished that and then I also finished two other projects which are another free pattern and this one I lovely viewer last time I was lambing so last year and we were lambing in February February into March so it was colder again because uh, now it's April. I'm sorry if you can hear the quad going around, but that's farm stuff. And, um, yeah, so, so what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so a lovely viewer of my channel sent me an email and told me about these lambing mitts. And this is a free pattern online. If you go to the website, Toft, Tolt, Tolt, Tolt because Toft is over here and it's, it's crochet stuff. Tolt, T-O-L-T. Uh, if you type in Tolt yarn and lambing mitts, it will come up. And it's a very simple pattern. And I made a pair of lambing mitts for myself and for Susanna. And I use Susanna's own yarn. So the, the Zvart Blush sheep that you've seen at the beginning, the black sheep, the wool that she has spun here, in County Kilkenny in the really special traditional woolen mill. That's it there. There's some Shep hair on it. So that white is Sheppy's hair and he's doing really well now. So we just have to check again in about a month or so, three weeks, his bloods and see are, are things back to normal or does he have some other chronic thing, but he's not in pain anymore and he's full of beans. So, so I used this and this is a, this is a DK weight. And this yarn you can get on her website or you can get on the Irish Fiber Crafters website. And hold on. <laughs> come in. So here are the lambing mitts. And Susanna has come in for a cameo. And she's so I made a pair for me. And my pair is the wonky pair that I haven't fixed yet or woven in ends. And I made a pair for Susanna out of her own wool, which I was showing you. And also my friend Carrie's, who's also a small sheep farmer. Um, that's her uh, Cory Dale mixed with a bit of really dark sort of Stellina. Oh, it smells good. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. So these are Perfect. the lambing mitts. And you can fold down the... Oh, wait. No, I think I put mine on backwards. That's... I can fold oh, this no, down? Oh, no. Yeah, that's... You can fold that down this if you want. This part down? It's if hard you to need. do with one hand. That's true. So, yeah. See, mine is... No, so, but it means it's lovely and cozy and yeah, tight. So if you want nice. to have more... Oh, look. I did it. There we go. And then this one, I fold this one down. So if I need more, more hand finger action. To, yeah, to, oh God, for, that sounds rude. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> like what's what you do to the four yos. Yes, when, when I'm massaging them to massage do them. But the, these yeah. are beautiful. That is so yeah. gorgeous. So and they go right up your wrist, which is really yes. nice. So and look, they go right down. There we go. I'm all woolly now. Yeah, look at that. exactly. So they're oh, going to be woolly. nice and strong, rustic wool, non superwash. And the glitter is lovely. Yeah, it's just a little bit, a like little it's bit not, of flash. Just a little bit of bling for when you're in the barn because exactly. you need that. <laughs> I like my bling. Yeah, my subtle you're, bling. You're a very blingy person. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, these are gorgeous. Oh, well, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. They're gorgeous. I forgot, I think I was saying that, so uh, Susanna's yarn, the her sheep yarn, is a DK. So it's, a you know, about 200 meters and 100 grams. 
and it's very good price. I think it's around 15 euros for a skein for a small farm and very, very local, like total low mileage. The place where it's washed and spun is, is Cushendale, which is about 10 miles away from her farm. So that's really special. And then Carrie's, this is the label that she sent me. We did a swap and this was a, a sport heavy decay or light decay, 240 yards. So I held the two together and it worked out really well. And Carrie doesn't sell yarn, but she does sell her fleeces. Um, she has Corey Dales and Shetlands and she's in Michigan and she's My Wool Mitten here and she's My Wool Mitten Farm on Instagram and she is, her sheep are just for wool. She's been doing it for years and years and years. They're coated. It's wool for spinners. So check that out. It goes really quickly from my understanding. So, but yeah, check her out. So that can go in the Irish cow, I think, even though it's not all Irish wool. Not that it's a big deal. And then I can't remember if I showed you this. Another finished object that I'd done, I finished slippers. And this, again, is Carrie of My Wool Mitten ran last year and this year a sock spin along. And last year for the sock spin along, I mixed up Irish alpaca from Galway Bay alpacas and Irish Wensleydale from Sandra at Meet the Wool. And I carded them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many interruptions I've had and I'm just saying this not for me like it doesn't matter but when you have a small farm and it's basically a one woman farm and that's Susanna's and also she does so much on Instagram and Twitter with the wool and the regenerative farming and so much stuff like she and she's very much into the whole environmental different things with farming and wildlife so she has a lot of people come by all the time to to see and learn um groups tour groups as well you can come visit as well you can book online on her you can send her a message on her website or probably on instagram as well maybe um, or Twitter to book in to tour the farm but like school stuff it is truly never ending here um I don't know how she does it like which is why I I make a point if I'm in the country to come down and help with the lambing because it just means she gets slightly more sleep because she does not usually get a time to rest during the day because if it's not you know, farm work being done, it is all this other stuff, much less the social media presence that she has and Patreon and stuff, because that's one thing that enables her to keep farming and regeneratively farming and doing the thing that she does. Um, because, yeah, I mean, blankets and wool from a small farm are great, but they're not going to pay all the bills that a farm... <laughs> Uh, anyways, but yeah, so, yeah, I don't know how she does it, and I hope she can keep doing it, and yeah, um, anyway, so, so anyway, so where was I, um, yeah, so last year with Carrie's Knit Along, I was making knee warmers, again, for lambing, because I have so much arthritis, Thankfully, not in my hands. Oh, knock wood. Please, God, no arthritis in the hands, but like through my spine and my knees. And um, so my knees really kind of ache with the cold and damp. So I made up these knee warmers. So I spun the yarn into a three ply, ply crepe yarn and just made these and 64 stitches and a two by two ribbing. And they fit my, they go right up on my knee. I could have made them longer, but I was just aiming for my main knee. Okay, so I think I finished the last one just last month in order to come here. I can't, I know I didn't finish them both because, yeah, just different things happened. But this month I finished slippers. So again, it was the same combination of the yarns and that I had spun and 
The blue is the Wensleydale that Sandra dyed herself from her Wensleydale sheep. And I used Wensleydale because it's a long wool, so it has, you know, nice long staple and with alpaca because that gives it strength. So these should do really well. Now, I have been wearing these for the past three weeks constantly in here and outside if I'm just tootling around outside. And I used up the rest of the wool that I'd spun. And um, I ran out a little bit, so I added I added a little gray, plain gray wool there. And they are just holding up really well. They're just little house slipper socks. And they're super cozy and warm. I mean, and they're grody and dirty, but there is no wear at all. Like, that's just, that's dirt. I'm sorry about that. I mean, I hope you're not grossed out. This is just sort of real life. So, I, um, yeah, I just, uh, I don't remember what I cast on. I probably have notes there for a slipper sock. This was sort of, this was, a, uh, yeah, I would have done it as I do DK socks, um, so I would probably have used a 3.5 needle. Um, and I use, I do all my socks and slipper socks on a nine inch Chalgu metal needle circular. Yeah, 3.5 and I cast on 48 stitches and I just do a bit of ribbing. I didn't do a whole lot cause I didn't have a whole bunch of the yarn left. And uh, knit it up did the shadow wrap short row heel i love that and again if you have not learned how to do that from denise of earth tones girl to tutorial here on youtube check it out you might love it and then i do like an umbrella is it umbrella or spiral toe and um, because i just like that and i hate kitchener and then you just draw it in like a hat so yeah so these are just super duper fantastic really really working out well so I knit those as well, and they've been getting constant wear. Um, so those are my finished objects, and I will now just show you some of my whips. I, ha I am working on another test knit. I did a load of swatches for this, but I take apart my swatches to save the yarn. And I was a little bit disappointed because I really, really, really wanted to hold this yarn i have a beautiful forest green out brushed alpaca and silk that i ordered from drops and they it was so beautiful together but i could not get gauge and i was having to go down to like a three point i i don't know what's gone on with my gauge recently but i had to go down to like a 3.5 millimeter needle to do it and i was just like you know i, I don't want to do that because I'm knitting a cable jumper from, it's a test knit. It's the Pine and Fur Jumper by Athena Lou of the Seedling Stitch podcast here on YouTube. And I have test knit for her before. I test knit her carbine sweater, which it was a colorwork jumper. I did that over in winter. And her patterns are really good, really clear, you know, just, just hardly... I don't think I had any comments to make on it. You know, it was just really well laid out. So I was very happy to test knit for her again. I am test knitting, I think it's size three, which is the medium. And again, her sizes are size inclusive up to, I think it's four or five X, whatever the craft council says. And I don't think I said that about the tank RT. And that is size inclusive as well. And I know Athena was looking for testers for the size 4 and 5X. I don't know if she's found that yet. This test knit is not really due to kind of mid-July, but I'm hoping to get it done by the end of June. Now, it is going to be a little bit challenging, I think, for me because I... I, I took the test knit because I want to do more cables because I'm not great with cables. I also, and I only took it because it was going to be about three months long because I find that cables can hurt my hand a bit. I'm using four millimeter needles and I'm using the Donegal yarn 
uh, spun by the Donegal Woolen Mills up in County Donegal, would you believe, here in Ireland. And it is a mix of Irish wool and merino from New Zealand. So it's a rustic yarn. It's not super wash. It's lovely kind of little, yeah, you can see the heathery shades of green in there. And the pine and fur is going to be a bit of a challenge, so I think I'm going to add it into the uh, Karen of a Yarn Tail podcast here on YouTube is doing a knit along where it's, I think she's calling it the You Can Do It Cow. And we're starting off straight away in here with twisted cables, which is not anything I've ever done before. But uh, thankfully, Athena has made a tutorial video, so I've been watch looking at that. And it's just more of a challenge because of lambing brain. Um, they look absolutely beautiful. One of the testers has finished already, so wow. Um, so yeah, I I know that I will learn it, but it's just be I have special challenges with doing things with my hand because I don't. Maybe you are the same. I am a left eye dominant, but I'm right handed, and that is actually a thing that can make watching something and trying to mimic it really hard because the, like it's just like they don't quite meet up and I only reason I found that out I mean I've always kind of had that challenge throughout my life um so like I could book learning is not a problem but like I mean book learning reading looking at pictures and then trying to do is like very hard and watching a video is very hard and watching someone do a dance step and trying to recreate it is very hard All, like I understand it but I can't make my body my body doesn't want to do it but I found out several years ago from a uh, optometrist and that was her special area of study and like her PhD or whatever and so she told me she asked me she said do you find you know watching something and then doing it yourself a challenge and I was like yeah why and she explained she said well you're left eye dominant and you're right handed and that can that can cause those kind of problems so anyway so which is I mean it took me months to learn how to knit and purl to get it right to get it to stick and um, there were a lot of tears but I really wanted to knit so Anyway, so whenever I'm learning like a new stitch or a new technique or whatever, it just takes me longer than a lot of people. And I say this as well because if that's you, you can do it. Just keep at it. You can do it. I mean, a lot of times I say, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, just don't give up. This can go into parents, but I also, Alex of My Yarn Corner has been running, I don't know if that's over, I think it might be over in June, the, um, a mal that is mal or a cow i think it's a mal but it's it's along the same lines it's like a challenge and then her partner danny who is also part of the my yarny corner yarn dyeing is running uh, take it easy mouse because <laughs> that's he always says take it easy so like you have your challenge and then you have your take your easy so um Yes, so this is going to be my challenge, my pine and fur, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. My take it easy is my other new cast on. And this might be able to go into the Irish um, knit along as well, maybe. Um, I don't know if it would, I mean, there's Irish wool in it and it's Donegal yarn spinnery, but they're kind of bigger, you know, studio Donegal. So it might not, because I think it's more to promote the smaller the smaller um you know things like Cushendale isn't as as big as Donegal yarns anyhow so but the other one I've got is definitely able for the um Irish cow and this is in my lovely bag from Nicole of Fairy Realm yarn so appropriate this time of year this is hand painted and and also sewn by her and she has her own website and she's also on Etsy and I just, I love her bags. Uh, since Brexit, I'm not, yeah, because of customs and fees and taxes. But, yeah, I bought lots of lovely things from her before Brexit. But what I'm knitting is the Ferny Corner Shawl by Emma Robinson. You probably know her from Woolly Mammoth Fibers. And this is her first pattern, I think. 
And at the moment, I'm. this is the take it easy part anyway. It's not the lace work. There's some lace work in it. This is just, you know, some yarn over. So this is the take it easy part. You knit till you have like a fair bit on, and it's just a two, you know, two row repeat. So I, I don't have to look at the pattern or anything. And I'm knitting it out of the beautiful yarn naturally dyed by Sophie of Shunnick Yarns and County Clare over in Doolin. And she's the one running the cow. And also she and Grace of Babel's Yarns are have started up a new yarn festival here in Ireland. It's just a one day festival. It's small enough, it's just starting. This is gonna be the first year, but it's called the Let's Knit Festival. And it's gonna be in Doolin on the 29th of October. And um, yeah, so it's gonna be free entry for people to go. And um, yeah, looking forward to that. So this is her, it's a Merino single. So I wanted to use that. I was gonna use it in a top, um, I was going to use it in the Rocket Tea by Tannis Lavallee, Lavallee. Um, but I, and I was going to stripe it with this lovely mohair also from Sophie, but Lambing Brain, I just, I wasn't doing good with the striping because I was forgetting to stripe. And so I took that, tore that out, frogged that. And also I was kind of going, you know, a, a singles is not the best yarn to use in a garment because it's very sort of fragile and it's going to pill and especially a merino single is very soft like this it's better in a shawl something that's not going to get a whole lot of wear so this is a better use for it um but this is her tag here sorry it's all wrinkly the shunnock yarns and shunnock means fox in irish this colorway is called mermaid and it's 400 meters and 100 grams it's a fingering now, the Emma's pattern, uh, she knitted up in her own yarn, which was more of 350 grams to the 100 meters. So mine is probably a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner. Um, so the shawl may be a little bit larger. We'll see. And then, so this is going to be the main body. And then the lace pattern, the ferny pattern, I've decided I'm going to hold this mohair and silk double. And this is from Sophie, and this colorway is Bog Myrtle. And there's 240 meters in the 50 grams, and it's a 72 kid mohair, 28% mulberry silk. And look at the lovely colors. So see how nicely they go together. So um, this should, held double, should just be perfect for the um, ferny corner lace. So I'm really excited about that. And I started that. I started that last night after I finished um, weaving in the ends and all of my tank RT and blocked it, well, washed it and had it dry. I cast that on and yeah, it's really soft. So excited about that. The other um, thing that I'm knitting, now, I've gone through and I've made a list of my whips. And because I really want to finish all my whips up by 2024. And I think I have 14 whips and I wrote them all down, but I lost the piece of paper, of course. So maybe I'll make another little um, video about all my whips and how I'm going to try to organize myself that I can get all my whips done by the end of the year. But one whip that I have that I'm working on bit by bit, sorry, oh, look at that dirty mess, is the, a pair of leggings. So they are from the pattern slash recipe from Nicole Michelle, Time Weaver here on YouTube. And they're called the Lightning Thigh Goat Pants. And there's a reason for that name, which she explains in the pattern. And I'm holding two fingering weight yarns double. This one is a thrifted one that I got in the U.S. at Goodwill. It's um, from a dyer I imagine is not dying anymore because I couldn't find anything about them. But it was AJHC Wools. And this is a, the colorway is Rag to Riches. And it's just a basic 75 Merino, 25 nylon, superwash Merino. And it's... Um, a fingering weight of about 400, 420 meters in the 100 grams. 
And then this is, actually this is a lace weight by, um, that I got from Lovecrafts from, oh, I don't have the tag. The Fiber Company, I think was the name. And it's a, just a beautiful sort of silvery gray. And I'm holding these together. And the thing is about Nicole's pattern and the why it's probably more of a recipe is it just it gives you how to go through and it includes the short rows and all for your for your um, leggings. But it tells you how to do the simple math so that no matter what yarn or what gauge or what size you're doing, you can make it work. So right up from sort of like the newborn up to whatever size you want. So I did my maths. And um, I have knit, <laughs> I've just knit the, um, what's that called? This is a big dirty mess. I have knit, I mean, it's ribbing, the waistband. It's a folded over waistband. I didn't have any elastic, so I put a shoelace in there, you know, and you don't have to do that, but I put the shoelace in. A lovely stitch marker that I got as a gift in a lovely surprise gift package from one of my lovely viewers, uh, Yvonne. And yeah, I love, I love, um, yeah, seeing the special things like this. And it just reminds me of friends online that I have not ever met, but yeah, that's really special about the wonderful knitting and crafting community. So yeah, so I'm sort of treating this. Now I've got to do the short rows and then it's really pretty much gonna just be going around and around and then dividing for the legs and going around and around. So I'm sort of treating this like a blanket project slash mindless project. So I'm not in a hurry to get this done. Like I don't need to wear um, sort of wool leggings for quite some time, it'll be too warm soon. Yeah, so this is sort of like my blankety project. And then I also brought with me, I don't, why did I bring all these things for three weeks? I don't know, but you know, you probably understand. I brought one of the sock patterns I've been working on. And this is by Athena as well from the Seedling Stitch that I'm doing her pine and fur jumper. And this is also a challenge. This is my first toe up sock. And this is her porcelain sock pattern, which is really lovely. And this was uh, a it's a mini from a set from Copeland Yarns that I got via, via Inspiring Yarns up in Northern Ireland. And then this is just a sock yarn from Hobie in, excuse me, in white. So I cast on with the, um, it's a colorwork sock. I cast on and my toe is really terrible, but it was the first time I'd ever done it again. So like, you know, that was a challenge. And I figure I can just go back and stitch that toe up a bit. But I was I was so proud of myself that I did it. So this will be my first toe up sock. So I'll be working on that. So yeah, so these are some of the whips that I brought here. Not only do I have these whips, but I have other things I want to cast on as well. So not only do I want to finish the works in progress that I have, the 14 or so works in progress that I have, but I also want to knit new projects because that makes me excited as well. And because I'm doing the Lucky Dip Cow with Kate of Hawthorne Cottage Craft, I know that um, very soon when I go home, it'll be May and I'll dip something out of my Lucky Dip bag. And I'm hoping I mean, I think anything I have in there will work for this, but I want to cast on the Summer Secret Crop by Jessie Made Designs. I've never knit a crop top, and someone is doing a crop top cow, which again, I wrote down to tell you, but I think I've lost that piece of paper between all the moves I've had to do in the podcast. Professor Pearl, she's doing that. So I want to cast that on, and that starts May 1st. So I think I'll cast that on because for my size, I'll be able to um, knit that little top uh, with one skein. I want to cast that on. That is the Cla Clador fleece there. And that's a really good batch of it. Um, and Suzanne and I want to do a video where we kind of show you about skirting it, talk about it a bit. She is on the board helping to preserve this breed. 
and talk about and she can talk about the work that is being done uh, and a lot of it is like through back breeding and genetics and stuff so she can talk a little bit about that because I don't know much about that I just am a big fan of this wool a special very very rare Irish breed that's being brought they thought was thought to be extinct but then it was found there were about 35 or so uh, left it's all the work of one man starting it back up Sean Cadden I think is his name up on in Connemara or in Mayo so it's a west coast of Ireland breed so where I live in County Clare is part of that along the west and uh, it's very hardy and it was bred for wool and a little bit of meat and maybe milk I'm not certain about the milk but it lives on like up in the hills on poor poor ground and on the coast it'll eat seaweed and this sort of thing so it's a very hardy breed but the wool can be very very soft it also can be double coated and rough but originally particularly the wool was the main thing was wool so we have some samples of all different types of the wool so we're breed they're breeding back to um, get more and more of the breed characteristics come forward and part of that um, we are working towards is the really fine soft wool um, and very white washes up very white so it'll be very great for dyeing as well so we'll I'll be talking to you more and more about that project hopefully as things go on but hopefully we'll get a little video where Susanna can talk a little bit about that breeding program and saving this sheep because there are about, I think now, because it's maybe in the second year or third year coming in, I'm not certain, but I think there are about sort of 80 now, the gene pool of about 80 animals, whereas I think at first it was like 35. So yeah, really, really special, very, very special. And Cladore means shore dwelling. So the Cladore sheep, a very special Irish heritage breed from the west of Ireland. So Okay, friends, I think that is my main stuff that I wanted to talk to you about. And I hope you're doing well. And, you know, if you're not doing well, hold on, because things will get better. They will. They'll get better. We all have, we have those up and downs. But I know that um, sometimes when spring comes, if you're feeling low, in some ways, spring makes it feel worse because you're like, I shouldn't be feeling bad. It's spring and there's flowers and, you know, it's going to get warmer, but I feel bad. And that's OK. That's that's normal. That's OK. And if you're full of the joys of spring, great. That's normal as well. <laughs> we do all those things. So speaking of someone that does all those things, does, you know, the feeling not great, the feeling low and the feeling good. So. Just keep on carrying on. And this is a lovely, lovely community here, the knitting community and the people that comment on this channel. I really appreciate you. And I think I've gotten to all the comments and given them hearts. I'm doing not so great on replying. I haven't for a while because we were away for a month and now I was here lambing for a month. And um, But know that it is so, so appreciated. And um, yeah. So hopefully we'll talk, we will talk again soon. Take care, friends, with love from Black Sheep Farm. <laughs> Next time I see you, you'll be at Wild Cottage. <laughs>